Hello friends, my name is Kishan and welcome you in this video tutorial. In previous couple of videos, we have explored how to integrate a Spring Boot with the Flyway database migration tool. In this video tutorial, we are going to learn how to integrate a Spring Boot with Liquivest database migration tool. So in this quick tutorial, we will make use of a Spring Boot integration with Liquivest to evolve database schema of a Java application. The core of using Liquibase is the change log file. So if you go to the Liquibase website, then uh, uh, we have a link is called uh, best practices. And here, basically, if you look into here, then they have talked about the change log files. And there is a file is called uh, db dot change log master dot xml and this master.xml file will have to create and which will internally include the all xml file which which holds the database changes but when we talk about the liquibase then liquibase supports you to write a migration script in different uh, format like you can have a xml format yaml format json as well as sql format right so the core of using liquibase is the change log file and xml file that keeps track of all changes that needs that need to run to update the database now to use our uh, liquivase in a spring boot application first we have to use liquivase dependency in rpom.xml so this is the project which we had created in uh, past video uh, where we had seen how to integrate a spring boot with flyway so i'm going to make another copy of this project so let's copy this project and and create another copy in the same workspace. So let's paste it over here and I would give the project name as a Spring Boot Liquivase Integration. Liquivase Integration. And click on OK. And here we have created this project now this bootstrap class name i'm gonna change uh, as liquibase click on the next next and finish uh, now if you go to the pom.xml then in pom.xml currently we have a uh, dependency for uh, flyway so here if you go to the uh, uh, spring boot data initialization uh, documentation then they have given in brief they have given the brief description how we can integrate a liquivis with a spring boot and uh, they have written to automatically run liquivis database migration on a startup at the this dependency so first is the group id and second is the artifact id right so let's use this uh, group id instead of flyway now we are going to use liquivis and this is our artifact id right so now we are we have replaced uh, flyway with liquivis so guys if you are uh, working on any project then you my uh, uh, you might need a single uh, database migration tool so you, you can use either liquivis or uh, flyway not both right so that's the standard approach uh, now after making uh, this entry in the pom.xml uh, now go to the property file and here if you see here there is a couple of properties which is related to the flyware so let's remove this uh, property now how liquivase works with a spring boot if you are using a spring boot there is no need to define a bean for liquivase all you need to all you need is to put your change log file that is db change log master.xml uh, inside the resources if you go to the this website they have given the complete description so first you will have to create this directory inside that you can create change log master yaml or change log master xml so here we are going to follow xml version so here let's create this folder and inside this we have to create this master dot xml file right so the master change log xml file so this file i'm going to create inside this 
so let's create new and go to the xml select xml next and give the file name and click on the next next and finish now this xml doc type will have to copy from here so that i'm gonna copy and paste it over here and here your database change log starts here and it will have to close it somewhere now close it and between this uh, we can have a, a change log a script uh, in xml and that we are going to dump inside this so for simplicity that uh, uh, change log i mean uh, change, uh, change log file which is basically represents our, our database uh, migration script that already i have created and that i'm going to copy inside the change log so that change log file just i'm pasting over here so this change log file already i have written right so if you look into the this change log files then uh, here i have specified the author name and uh, ID so basically this there is a there is a there is a different change set change set and first uh, change set represents the database create data database table creation a script and second change set basically represents the I am applying index on the email column in employee underscore table and third uh, change set basically I am trying to insert two records in this table so there is a different chain set and every chain set in in your uh, liquid base execute in the separate transaction right so you every chain set uh, execute in the unit transaction right see in unit transaction and uh, if a chain set is applied successfully then that status is getting maintained uh, in the uh, chain change uh, uh, one of the table which is created by the uh, liquid base so that we will see now this uh, change log which is uh, which is a version of 1.0.1 .1, i have given that we have to include in the master xml file so we have a tag is called include and include all so basically if you want to include the single file then that is include if you want to include the all file in the particular directory then we will have to specify the, that directory name so I'm going to use the first tag and there I'm going to specify uh, my change log file is available in the DB in directory is called DB change log slash that file. So this is the way to uh, include our change log files. Now, now go to the application dot property here. You will have to specify some liquid uh, uh property. So there are several property. One of the property I'm going to specify liquid waste change log. So here basically we'll have to specify the uh, your master file location. So I would I would give class path colon db change log. And here you need to specify your master XML file name. So that I'm going to I'm going to include over here. So in property file, I have included this master log, and that's it. You are done with the Liquivest Spring Boot integration. Now, if I run this application before running, let me explain you what is this project is all about. So we have a Bootstrap class uh, which is annotated at the rate Spring Boot application. So this is the starting point of our application. This class basically implements command line runner. That's why we have overwritten its method run, and this method will be called automatically when we will run this application and here basically we have auto wire employee repository which is which is created by extending CRUD repository which holds the some CRUD related API and this is the way to basically create a, a, I mean database repository in Spring Data JPA and here we are making use of employee repository and just we are calling save method and we are trying to save employee information in database with this information so it's pretty straightforward and uh, in this application we are using the liquivest and how we can configure liquivest just i have shown you so once we'll run this application then uh, na, uh, we have a, a db script which is available over here basically this is going to create a database table 
and that is going to apply index on the email column and that will insert to records as well right using uh, liquibase uh, uh, change log file and our application is also going to create one more records right with this information so there will be a three records in the database right which is uh, one record is inserted by the our application and two records will be inserted by the liquibase and liquibase also performing the database creation as well as uh, that is applying index on the email call so let's uh, run this application and see how uh, liquibase works so before running this application let me show you the application dot properties file here i have used a uh, flyweight db here i am going to use liquibase db so i would say liquibase db and make sure this schema you have created in your database so here liquibase uh, db i have created there is nothing in the table directory as of now so here let's run the main method and see how liquibase works now we can investigate the uh, eclipse console first of all saying that successfully acquired change log log what is this we'll discuss later so now saying that creating database history table with name liquibase in this schema uh, liquibase has created a table is called database change log log and second table second time that is reading uh, data from this table right and uh, and uh, liquibase has applied some changes uh, and liquibase basically ran for the every change set so first of all our first changes change set basically created a database table after that uh, uh, saying that uh, uh, now index has been created and there are two uh, records inserted into these two tables so every information liquibase is going to display in with, with the complete details now saying that successfully release the change log so if you go to the database then and if you refresh then you can see uh, there are three tables in this database so first of all you can see this so uh, database you can see three records in this history table right a liquid uh, change log table so there are three change set uh, in our uh, change log files and there is a single record for every uh, change set right and this is telling every change set is successfully ran right so one two and three so there is three change set for every change set there is a single record and see the column name so that file name author name everything got inserted and most important we have a column is called checksum md5 checksum so that's the very important things that we will discuss and everything is got inserted this basically maintains the history of the uh, applied change on the uh, your database now next uh, table we have a uh, something is called database change log log so basically this when your app uh, your database changes is going to apply on the different clustered environment then basically uh, basically like liquid liquid has to first acquire the log See if someone has already acquired the log, then that will wait for uh, for certain time. And uh, if that uh, log is not getting acquired, then that will be filled. Now finally, we have a table, uh, and that there is a three tables. The first two records comes from the liquibs script, and third table is uh, getting inserted by our our uh, database, uh, our application itself, right? So that's all about uh, uh, we have uh, liquibs. Uh, Spring Boot integration. In next video, I'm going to talk about uh, these two tables in little depth. So this code I'm going to put on the GitHub, and GitHub location will get the video description. And in next video, we'll uh, see some more details on the liquid base. So please be with me over there, and thanks for watching this video.